my name is Brandy Michelle Stevens, and I am an associate pastor here with the Empowerment Center and TestimonyToday.org, um, as well as uh, uh, the ministry that I oversee, which is God Can Answer. And just want to welcome you to Testimony Today. Um, we are glad you're here, and um, today we're going to be featuring um, a a friend of mine, Brian Collison, who uh, has served with with World Impact for 19 years as a missionary, um, specifically in Los Angeles, and um, God has been doing great and mighty things through his life and through the the, the ministry that he uh, serves with. And so he's gonna, I'm gonna open up to him in a few minutes and, and allow him to to share what's on his heart about you know, the testimony of of God's miracle signs and wonders in his life. Um, but I also wanted to give everyone just a, an outline of how the flow of, the, of um, this call is going to go. Um, I will, in a moment, have, um, have Brian uh, share, but before, I just want to let you know that at the end of the call, towards the end of the call, whenever, whenever um, we're done, we will open up the call for anyone else in the call to share their testimony. Um, and we'll give you a check on how to do that when that time comes. Um, and uh, and I just want to open up in prayer. So, Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for um, for for Brian and his willingness to to come and share the mighty, amazing things that you've done in his life and in his in, in the ministry that you've had him being involved with. And Lord, I just protection over this call in Jesus' name. I bind any assignment of the enemy that would try to steal or confuse these testimonies today and words of encouragement that are meant to help your children and lift them up through Christ's risen power. I lose protection over those that have a heart of love and faith to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. Brian, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you again for, for coming on and, and being part of this. Um, I know God has done a lot in your life, and and um, you've been working in um, in Los Angeles now for 19 years for for WorldImpact.org, and uh, God has been using you in great and mighty ways. And would love for you to just I know you have a lot of different testimony, and I just as I said, the Holy Spirit is going to leave this call, so. Um, would you uh, share some of what the Holy Spirit is leading you to um, to share on testimony today? Absolutely, Shay. absolutely. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, like Brandy said, my name is Brian Cullison. I work for World Impact. I've been on staff as a missionary here in Los Angeles for a little over 19 years now. I've worn a lot of different hats, um, had a lot of roles since I came, um, kind of fresh faced out of college. I'm a Midwest boy, um, so the culture shock was was a little significant, not overwhelming, but uh, Los Angeles is a different beast um, than uh, sure. than Indianapolis. Um, I came really with a heart for youth and with with a heart for the homeless, and um, it's been interesting to see how God has just transformed um, just that, transformed my call, transformed who I am and what I understand to be. Um, kind of my my overarching life purpose and call from him as I've been here and just listened to him and as I continue to try to say yes to um, what he leads and directs me to, I'm just watching the adventures unfold. unfold. Um, So I've worked with youth. uh, I've worked with homeless. I've worked teaching in an elementary school and a middle school that we have here at World Impact. Um, I have facilitated um, like basically um, leadership development theology classes for urban church leaders. Um, And then most recently, um, before this role that I'm on now, I was a church planter for about uh, 10 years. Um, Actually, no, longer than that, 13 years. Um, So uh, I had had a lot of experience and a lot of different things that I had um, worked through and had learned and um, was continuing to learn and was pretty excited about it and still am. But um, 
because of the variety of leadership changes and organizational shifts that we were going through back in 2014 uh, and a new role that they were going to assign me to, to be on the media team. It was uh, through the suggestion of some spiritual advisors of mine and um, from the Lord himself, it just seemed like a perfect time for me to take a well-needed sabbatical. So um, uh, hopefully those who are listening are familiar with the term sabbatical. If you're not, it's basically just uh, a time away for refreshing and hearing from the Lord. So um, I uh, was able to work with a, a team of people to plan out a three-month sabbatical for myself. And um, I would be living in Oregon with my sister and her housemate, and I would be uh, traveling about a little bit and uh, doing a lot of silence and, solid, silence and solitude with the Lord, just hearing from him and reading and reflecting. And, and I was looking forward to it, but I really had no expectations at all. I had never been on a sabbatical. Um, so kind of just went with open open arms, open hands, and said, Lord, whatever you want to do in this time. And uh, it was, I'll get to this later, but uh, it was amazing to see what God continually spoke um, to me through the three months. So even before the sabbatical started, it um, just how everything came together the timing of everything and the provision of everything was um, just so obvious to me that this was a God ordained um, experience and season that I was, that I was going to be entering into. So I had, uh, you came in with open, with open, you know, open hands and open, open, with an open mm -hmm. heart. So you Mm -hmm. gave the Lord free reign and absolutely giving him that free reign. He, he surprised you and amazed you. And that's, that's so great. A hundred percent. That's absolutely true. So uh, I had worked out with uh, with a couple of my sabbatical advisors that I was going to need for, for the road trip up and the road trip back and for um, a few different retreats that I was going to be taking in that time and for a spiritual director that I was going to be consulting with for uh, the duration of the time every two weeks. Um, I was going to need about $1,300 on mm-hmm. top of my regular expenses. And I honestly didn't know where that was going to come from, but this was my first kind of testimony for the um, for the Lord's provision in it. Um, this is unlike me in normal ways. Um, I can be anxious at times, but um, for this, I was just like, you know what? I don't know where that's coming from, but I absolutely know that God is going to provide it, and I don't know how. So I just kind of put a, a little blurb not even mentioning the finances. I just put a blurb out on Facebook saying, this is what I'm doing. Uh, This is what my next few months is going to be like. I'm going to be going through these different towns. If you know anybody in these towns who wouldn't be willing, who would be willing to host me, who wouldn't mind having me for a night, um, that'd be great. Get in touch with me. And so um, I had a friend from high school who I literally had not talked to since we graduated from high school. So we were Facebook friends, and that was the extent of it. And he emailed me back right away and um, messaged me on Facebook, actually, and said, uh, what's your PayPal address? And so I, I gave it to him thinking, you know, he might send 20 or 25, which would right. be a huge blessing. But um, I get a notice from PayPal saying I've got a payment from my friend, and I look it up, and he sent me $500. Wow. And I was just... I was flabbergasted. I was like, well, this is almost half of what I need just from one guy who I barely know. So that kind of set the tone for even just over the next month as I was preparing for it and and getting funds from from a few people who really were wanting to invest in me. It was very humbling and just seeing God's provision. But I I love that um, because one of the things that I've I've learned is about um, how – where we need to allow God to be God in our lives. And so sometimes we think that we have to make it happen. And although mm-hmm. there are things that we do have to do in the natural because, you know, he works with us, but mm-hmm. there are there are plenty of times where he doesn't, he doesn't need us to hustle blessings or to solicit favor. He's like, no, let me be God in your life and, and I'll take care of this. This is what I'm doing and I'm orchestrating this in your life. So let me be God in this. And yeah. I mean, you weren't even, I mean, 
when you put that post on Facebook, you weren't even asking for money. You weren't even hinting toward it. You weren't, like you said, you weren't soliciting favor. You weren't hustling any blessings. You just were <laughs> really just letting people know, hey, this is what I'm doing. And you didn't have any ulterior motives. It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to, you know, see who, you know, you, right. that's just the amazing part of it. And you were so humble. You were just sharing. And, and look at God. Look at how he surprised mm-hmm. you. Look at how he blessed mm-hmm. you. And it came, you know, the provision came through a person probably who you would have least expected it because you haven't right. talked to him since high school. And it wasn't like, you know, you guys are buddy-buddy and talk all the time. So right. that is just, that is just um, that's how God works. I love it. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. right. Your testimony is exactly right on that. Oh, I, was, okay. I thought someone else was going to say something. Um, yeah, I was, it was, it was him and several other individuals that came forward. Um, and exactly like you said, it was people I wasn't expecting to. It, they were people who, um, other people who weren't necessarily doing well financially, but just had such a belief in what God was doing in me and really wanted to invest in me and give back to me. That mm-hmm. um, was just, like I felt loved and supported through the whole thing. I just felt very released to go into this. Um Excited, like like I was about to get on a roller coaster ride, and couldn't wait for that first thrill um, uh, drop. Which I love roller coasters. If you don't like them, it's not a good analogy for you. But <laughs> I love them, so it works for me. <laughs> um, so so really, the all of that set the tone for the first major lesson that I received. Which I was about two days into the sabbatical, I was driving up. Um, through California, I was going to a few different national parks. I'm a, I'm an avid photographer, and I love um, landscape and nature photography. And so I was, I was going to take advantage of the trip up to Oregon and just do all that I could. And God really just showed me on that drive. He was reminding me of the different ways that He had provided for me, and even just, even just the rental car, which was an unbelievable deal and it was an unbelievable vehicle that I'm not used to driving. I have a a humble Honda Accord, um, which I was scared to death to take all the way up to Oregon. I didn't think it would make it after um, having it from uh, for 17 years. So, um, so uh, God just showed me, he said, you know, Brian, you, you really have bought into this myth of scarcity where, um, you don't think there'll be enough, and you know you 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 skimp and you save and you you're frugal and you maximize and and all of those are fine to do as a good steward, but you're doing it for the wrong motivation. You think that if you don't do that, that there's not going to be enough for you, and that's mm-hmm. not the kind of heavenly father that I am. I love you and I want to provide what you need, and um. And so that's great that you do those things, but let me be your heavenly father. Let me provide for you in rich ways that that you're not expecting. And I was just, I was blown away and I was humbled and I was like, absolutely right here, Lord. You, so awesome. You're showing me something that was kind of a blind spot for me. Mm-hmm. And that manifested in a lot of different ways, not just in money, but with food, with time, with energy, with just me kind of having this. I guess kind of a mindset of self-preservation of just wanting to like make sure I had enough and, and was afraid that there always would be. And I don't know where that came from. And it's not how I was raised, but somehow or another, at one point or another, I had really inadvertently um, embraced that lie from the enemy. So um, yeah. praise God for that. That was the first thing that he enlarged and, and revealed to me. Um, yeah. After the first week and a half or so, I, I I had gotten to my final destination in Oregon, and then I actually went on a, on a solitude retreat at a, at a camp on the Oregon coast for a week, and just wanted to kind of kickstart the time off with some pretty intentional um, solitude time and silence before the Lord and um, retreats before I got into the kind of the routine of the sabbatical. And um, in that time, at the end of that first week, uh, I was walking on the beach, uh, like a long hike, about a four-mile hike. And at the end, after just listening for a long time of that hike, during that hike, God showed me two idols that I'd had in my life. And the first idol was of comfort, and um, it was just really a way of me wanting to be comfortable, 
at all possible times and costs. And if I knew that I was going to be entering into a period or an experience or relationship where it was going to be uncomfortable, just try to get through that and, and not really um, be patient with the Lord in the process, but just mm-hmm. um, look out for myself. And it's another self-preservation yeah. way, but thing, but um, that also would manifest itself with, with usually with food, to be honest. Um, that was how I comforted myself. And, um, God showed me, hey, these things that you're seeking after to to bring comfort to yourself, let me be your source of comfort. Mm -hmm. As your Heavenly Father, I will not only provide for you, like the last lesson I showed you, but I will also be your comfort. You don't have to go seeking for it in these other ways, through distractions or through entertainment or through friendship or through food. All those things are good and pleasant when used appropriately, but but, um, not how I had been... Um, experiencing them in my life. So he showed me that, and he also showed me at the, on the same moment, he he showed me how um, I was finding my identity in things other than being God's beloved, to be honest. That was just the plain truth of it is I needed to, emb- I needed to embrace that I was God's beloved and mm. not in the identity I was trying to carve out for myself um, through my own pride of just achievement and... Um, reputation and um, it would manifest in me being defensive if I was criticized even if I wasn't externally defensive in my mind I would justify all of my you know all of my attitudes my actions my words etc and so God really showed me hey I want to be your comfort but I also want you to find your identity in me and not in anything else that the world has to offer or that you're trying to manufacture yourself so those were those two things were powerful threads that wove throughout the entire rest of the sabbatical. Well, and one of the things that I love about our father is that he, when he teaches us something, he does it in such a gentle way. He's so gentle Mm -hmm. and he doesn't, Mm -hmm. I mean, the Bible says there's no condemnation in Christ. um, But sometimes we, we condemn ourselves or we allow the enemy to bring condemnation on us or we allow other people to bring condemnation, so we feel bad, we feel guilty, we feel we're ashamed, but that's not that's not the character of our God, and that's not how He teaches us things. And so, um, that I just that's such a great example of how He loves us and how He's gentle, He's a gentleman, and how when He's teaching you these these new things, or these lessons, and He's He's revealing Himself to you, but He's also revealing yourself to you, so you can see these things that need to be changed. But he's doing it in a way that he didn't he didn't make you feel bad for the choices exactly. you were making. He didn't make you feel bad for, you know, exactly. your idea of self preservation. He wasn't Amen. trying to, you know, make you feel uncomfortable or like, mm-hmm. Oh man, I'm I'm bad. I I disappointed my, my heavenly father. He made you you know, taught showed you and, and did it in love. And then you didn't walk away with your head hanging down so disappointed. You walked away like, Oh wow this is great. Mm-hmm. And you're mm-hmm. like, you're in, and instead of you're empowered, instead of feeling ashamed or disappointed, you're empowered and you're like, wow, this is so great. And then you were able to take that with you along this, you know, this whole sabbatical journey. And um, God just gave you more revelation. And oh my gosh, I just, I just love that. I love how <laughs> God does, does that. He's just, he's so sweet. He's so, so, I come all the time like, Lord, you're so sweet. You're so sweet. And I love that. <laughs> So, Amen. Yeah, he showed you a sweetness, so that's so awesome. Okay. Bye. Amen. I will. I will um, agree with your empowerment um, uh, word there too. I mean, that's just a perfect way of 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 describing. Kind of, that's a perfect um, segue too of um, just the yeah the sweet, gentle way that he did it in in such a way that if a friend would have shared it with me or someone else, like mm-hmm. I don't know that mm-hmm. I could have received it in the same way, but because it was from him. Um, it's right. much easier, and and exactly what you said is empowering. That was a, that was even a revelation in and of itself. It wasn't just him pointing it out and saying, "Look, these are areas of growth in your life that you need to take care of." It wasn't that way at all. He revealed it to me, and he also literally transformed it, like actually transformed it in my being. I could feel the change as mm-hmm. he was showing it to me through those months. Um, of, yeah. of oh wow, um, this is a this is a dynamic that I not only do I believe something's different now, but I actually am changed in my reaction to those old temptations, my old relationship with 
my my relationship with food, et cetera. So it wasn't just like me hearing something from the Lord and then gritting it out and white knuckling it, saying, yes, I can do this new thing that you've asked me to do, but actually just no, saying, I receive that word, Lord, and I also receive kind of what you're doing in my spirit through your Holy Spirit. And that was mm-hmm. Um, that was kind of a new experience for me, to be honest. I hadn't had it experienced in such a way before where I actually felt empowered um, and different um, to live out the new me that he was creating, forming. Like I was, I was feeling that um, in a very real way, that image that he gives in scripture of me being the clay and him being the potter. And like I was transforming it. It even manifested Mm -hmm. physically. I wanted to get I wanted to get more healthy physically just um, in the routine of life and ministry. Um, probably we all can, can resonate with this idea from one time to another. Of, of You just fall into unhealthy patterns of eating and lack of exercise or whatever. And it was, it was my chance to get away in the sabbatical and say, kind of establish a healthy pattern and do what he did for me, even just in my transformation of finding comfort in the Lord. Um, I wasn't trying to do this necessarily, but, um, over the course of the whole time and since I've been back, I've lost like 30 pounds and just feel healthier and more energetic and um, wasn't wasn't super out of shape in the first place, but knew that I, I wasn't um, I wasn't following healthy patterns that I knew I wanted to. And so that was just a gift from, from the Lord on that, that, that I, I recognize too want to give him glory in. God, God's, God's preparing your body for uh, what he's preparing you for for your assignment. Amen. Jesus, amen. <laughs> so, uh, so I rarely interject, and I'm loving this. I'm like amening in the background. I heard this, <laughs> and I'm like, God's getting you ready, brother. There's a plan and a purpose. He needs you. He needs you energized. He needs you to. He needs you. You. He, he is. He has made you into a new creation for this amen. moment. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Keep going, brother. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I was. So, I was also going to say too that um, that whole you know when he when he, when he renews our mind it does transform us. And sometimes we only think that it just transforms our thinking. Well, that obviously is, you know, that's a big part of it. But he, he also can transform our bodies. He can transform the way we do things because because when, when our mind is renewed, it also, um, uh, it also even, I, I believe it renews our heart too. So we're more sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We're, we become more um uh, just more sensitive to him. And so we're like, okay, I need to do this. And you just, hear him in different ways and you and you, you think that oh the Holy Spirit only leads you to you know when you're praying or only leads you in this, that, and the other, as opposed to, okay, the Holy Spirit can actually coach me on on how to eat better or how to how to right. um right. what workout is best for me. You know? Right. So right. Yeah. Yeah. Um so the the rest of the, the first two months of the sabbatical really were just um Living, living those things out, those new dynamics, and and mm-hmm. processing through them through with others, and testifying to others about what God was doing in me, and doing a lot of reading in that time, and um, kind of coming back to LA before I had kind of a lapsed final two weeks. Um, I was reading a journal from a friend of mine who she has her own um, blog and. And she was writing about the year that she had had, her and her family had had. And it was, it, it's just been a horrific year. Um, and without going into the details of that, I just recall reading the blog myself and, and, and thinking kind of what my normal pattern is. is I'm, I'm, I'm naturally optimistic, but I'm also kind of willfully positive in all circumstances. And uh, I was hearing about some of the just horrible things that she had gone through, much of which I had actually walked through with her and her family and lived through the pain of that. And I kind of just kind of to myself had made this comment to myself of, well, such and such, it's okay that that happened because it was probably going to end in such and such anyway. And it just might've saved you some, some pain in the future. And um, it would make more sense if you knew the details of the story, but, but, um, but in essence, as soon as I had that thought, the Lord kind of gently chided me again. And he said, you know, Brian, um, your optimism and positivity, those are gifts from me, but um, you misuse them in ways that in some ways short circuit 
some of the things that I want you to experience with others. And, you know, and this kind of relates back to the comfort thing, but um, it's kind of a way of my, my finding myself in any kind of a negative situation or uncomfortable situation or just hard time suffering that mm-hmm. we're all, we all know we're going to go through as, as followers of Christ. Um, you know, the Lord promised persecution and, um, and it was my way of kind of trying to get through those times as quick as possible and just being positive and trying to put a spin on everything. And he said, you know, sometimes when you do that, you, you short circuit the process and you don't um, sit in a situation with someone or with yourself and let me teach you something that I want to teach you in that moment. Mm -hmm. And don't try to just get through it as fast as possible, but sit in there with me. Let me be with you in that moment and say, Brian, what, what is it that I want to do in you? How do I want to transform you through this? Um, it's not that we should embrace suffering for its own sake, but um, it is something that God uses as a tool and it gets our attention. And, um, you know, sometimes with my positivity, it can be disingenuous in the sense of, you know, I'm not really being real with even how my how I feel um, myself, being being real with if I do have negative emotions or being real or honest with people about where I'm at instead of just um, putting a false front on and saying, no, I feel fine. So that was another thing which kind of which ultimately proved the, ultim- the, the final lesson for me um, through this whole sabbatical of, um, the kind of the word picture that that the Lord gave me was um, there's all these stakes in the ground that I had put to to kind of be signposts to people about the identity I wanted them to see me as and also kind of stake out my ground for my own identity, like what I felt comfortable in, the ground that I felt um, I was kind of claiming or staking for myself. And, you know, I can give examples from, from what I've already testified before of just like my positivity or my achievements or my maximizing or my fruit um, ability to be frugal or stretch a dollar or, you know, whatever, put fill in the blank, all the different ways that I had kind of identified myself. And the Lord was uprooting all of those and he wasn't taking them away from me, but he was, he was uprooting them and placing them on the ground gently and saying, Brian, you still have these. These are aspects of who you are and they're gifts that I've given you and you can use them for the kingdom. But, um, I want to enlarge who you are and where you go from here. And I don't want you to put these stakes in the ground and say, this is who I am. But let me show you who you can be and I'm going to transform you even more. Um, so so kind of ultimately, I guess, the, the, the walk away I had, besides all these other discrete um, learning moments and, and principles where, where I was learning more about who God actually is to me, Mm-hmm. and who I am mm-hmm. in him, like being his mm-hmm. beloved, um, and how to lay down the the idols and the things that I thought made my identity. That was that was really what I walked away with. And so I kind of wow. took those as I moved into this new season of ministry, walking into 2015, um, excited for what the Lord has for me and, 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 and really um, uncertain, um, but expectant. And like you said before, what you picked up on is, coming into this new season with open hands and saying, God, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever you want to do in me, continuing to do in me, whatever you want to do through me, I'm, I'm open um, mm-hmm. as I enter into this, into this new season. So praise God. I'm, I'm so excited that I had the chance to, to share. Hopefully it's been a, an encouragement for, for those of you who are listening to yeah, just take time to be silent before the Lord and let him have those times um, on a daily basis. If you can even just give him, 10 minutes and wait before him and see what he might have to say to you, but also take, be intentional and take those day retreats or certainly your Sabbath, or if you have the opportunity um, to take a sabbatical, I could not recommend it highly enough. It is uh, a life transforming event that um, I can testify to. And I will testify to as a, as a milestone in my life. So. Amen. Yeah, and it's it's so um, – I'm so glad you even said about how, like, just, you know, taking time before him and uh, to be found before him. And the other the other thing that I would add to that as well is um, is actually asking him, because sometimes we struggle with things, whether it be, whether it be an addiction, whether it be a, um, something that we just know is something that we need to change in our life or it's a downfall of ours, whatever, a weakness. 
and we struggle with it, trying to fix it on our own, or, try, or, or we accept that, oh, I guess it's just how I am, instead of actually coming to him like, Lord, how do I do this? How do I change this mm-hmm. behavior? How do I, you know, how, do you, how, how can I parent better? How can I be more compassionate towards my spouse? Or what, whatever it, it is right. that you're struggling with, that we can actually just ask him. And if we then also give him time to respond, because sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, we make a mistake of asking and we don't actually give him time to respond. It's like, you know, if you're, if, if, you, if you, you know, I'm having a conversation with my friend and telling them, oh, this, you know, telling them all this stuff. And then, then I don't even give them a chance to respond. I'm just, I just leave like, oh, they got to go now. And right. Sometimes in prayer, we do that. We tell us God everything and we, you know, vent to him, tell him everything. You know, maybe even, maybe even ask him some questions or ask him how to do something. And then like, okay, amen. And then we're out. We're on to the next thing. And he's like, well, you didn't give me right. a chance to respond. You're asking right. me to teach you something, but you're not giving me an opportunity to teach you. And there are times when, you know, um, and like in your case, obviously you took a sabbatical, mm-hmm. an absolute faith, faith move on your part because you'd never taken one before. It was unfamiliar mm-hmm. territory. It took you out of your comfort zone. You didn't even know what to expect. You weren't, you know, he wasn't really giving you much of a heads up on what was going to ha- what was going to happen or how it was going to happen but you you said yes and and you didn't know how you were going to pay for anything you didn't know any of this stuff and um i i, I definitely know that your obedience absolutely unlocked your provision um and then mm. and, and so much more it, it unlocked so much more as well it unlocked mm. revelation and um deliverance and freedom and and uh just oh man it's so awesome to do <laughs> to hear what, you know, what God did in that time. And I know that you've only shared a portion of what, you know, some of the lessons you learned and some of the things that Mm -hmm. you walked away with and how it literally transformed your life, not just in that season, but your life forever. Like your life will never be the same because of of that time where you, 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 you created a space for God to come and reveal who he is to you, who he is in you. And then he just, he blew your mind. I know you were not expecting to have the revelation that you had and how he just transformed you from the inside mm-hmm. out in every way possible. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when mm-hmm. you, even with the, the picture that you shared about how you had these stakes in the sand and how, how the Lord was taking all these things and, and putting them to the side, not saying that those were not yours anymore, but it, right. still, is part, it still is part of you. But like this is, There's so much more. And the, right. when you were describing that, that what was in my spirit was he's enlarging your territory. And mm-hmm. in order for your, inter- your territory to be enlarged, it had to be, he had to show you, okay, this, this part of who you are, it's not the only part of who you are. And this isn't, this isn't the only part of me in you, if there's so much more. And he just was using that to, to enlarge your territory. So that's, that's so, so awesome. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing. That. Okay. Absolutely, thank you so much for just even just your words interjecting in into the testimony. Like it really is just so life giving and affirming. And every time I get to share this with people, um, it's a reminder to me of it's both a confirmation and an affirmation of what God did in me. It solidifies it, but it also it gets me excited because I know that the Lord wants to. And he wanted to not just bless me through the sabbatical. It's never about just ourselves, but it's about mm-hmm. multiplying that blessing to others and how he multiplies even the, not just the blessings, but the lessons that I learned. And hopefully others can hear those same things and um, yeah. learn them through me and not have to go through it themselves. So I got a question for you, brother. I got a Absolutely. You. Did, God, uh, did God show you anything when you were up there? Did he show you anything in the spirit and, or did he prophetically tell you about anything that is going to take place in the future, any anything it could be about you, could be about anybody else, doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. But did, did he specifically show you something while you're up there? To, to be honest, um, you know, there were a couple different areas in my life um, that I was pretty open to the Lord on. Just I, I really was wanting to seek discernment on, and he was yes. very he was very quiet on those things. He, everything he showed me and spoke to me through 
just my silent time with him through the things I was reading, through um, spiritual direction and, and my, my prayer team um, were kind of more identity issues and idolatry issues in my own life and not mm-hmm. on some of the things I was asking him for discernment on. So to be honest, no, it, it wasn't really about anything else other than that. Um, but I'm, I was open I was open to hearing, but um, I'm, I'm hoping to go into this new season with it. Yeah. What is what is the desire of your heart to draw from the Lord and your and your assignment? What is the desire of your heart? Mm. To where the Holy Spirit is leading you. Yeah, well, I mean it has been for for most of my adult life it has been my deepest desire to just build the kingdom of God um through discipling as many people as I can as well as I can. Like I, I really take the Great Commission very seriously and Feel like God has given gifted me. I'm going to help such you. We're going to go to, back to that question that you went to. Oh, you're sure. On the, you're on the sabbatical, and you said yes. that you asked the Lord for greater discernment in greater areas, but that you didn't hear at that time, right? Right. Okay. What was the greater discernment that you were asking for? What was the desire of your heart that you were attempting mm-hmm. to achieve through discernment or listening to the Lord in a greater capacity? Um, just how He wanted. Yeah, I wanted I wanted to know how he wanted to use me in this new season, how how he was going to have me approach it because uh it seemed like a few of the things that I had been trying to do had been shut down. So I wanted to see God is this a new season and am I supposed to take a new approach? Um the call hadn't gone away to be a disciple maker and to be a church planter, but how was he going to do that and what role through what means? So yes. That's, that's kind of what I want to continue to hear. the desire yeah. of your heart? We'll, we'll, we, it, Lord, Father God, release right now an increase of the spirit of faith into this brother right now through love, Father God. Increase uh, spiritual discernment to, to discern, Father God, uh, uh, a word with power being spoken. Father God, uh, elevate the gift of knowledge inside of him. Uh, to, to, to see into the intentions of hearts of men and women. Um, um, Father God, increase his faith so he can hear you clearly, Father God. And Lord, Father God, equip this brother with prophecy, clear prophecy. Lord, Father God, as it is necessary for him to deliver a word at an exact moment, Lord, that you will quicken his heart and you will supernaturally reveal to this brother every single solitary thing that needs to be said in that exact moment in Jesus' name. It is very, very important, brother. And, Lord, I just release, I release uh, the, the, those desires, Lord, that he, that he had to hear you and to get that clarification. Lord, Father God, make it happen right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Make it so yeah. in the mighty name. By the way, that's Amen. that's that that to me, that that to me, is more important because because Romans fourteen twenty two, you know Romans fourteen twenty two, Romans fourteen was one of the most important books in the entire. It, it, it's one of the single most important chapters I think, uh, in the Bible in relationship to uh, uh, eating and drinking, personal standards of holiness, and and he, mm-hmm. and he wrote that down, and it's good, and it's good that we're reminded of it. Because it says, uh, whatever you approve of uh, regarding these things, keep between yourself and the Lord. Um, mm-hmm. it, blessed is the man who does not approve by what he consumes. You know, because whatever he approves of is not by faith. And everything that's not done by faith is sin, right? And, and so mm-hmm. what's important is, 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 is that the, what was more important, what's more important than anything besides the revelation uh, in relationship to the personal uh, uh, stuff, mm-hmm. Is is what you were desiring to hear from God? That was more important mm. because because you're desiring to hear Him. You're seeing something uh, dr- go up in one area, and 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 you're like, Hey, God, I need to know. I need mm-hmm. to know what's 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 up. And and in those situations where you go there, what's really interesting is is that's happened to me before, brother. And and you'll go into a dry spot. And you're not going to hear nothing. 
Mm-hmm. It's like it's like you're like the one answer that you're looking at. He'll show you, he'll show you all this other different stuff, except for like the one thing you're really really you know. And, and it's it's almost like a spiritual fast. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's not even like a uh, it's almost not even like a physical fast, more than like almost like a spiritual fast. Um, and those those are the driest parts. And that's that. I mean, that's something that happened to me when I was searching for the Lord um, mm-hmm. for that. But I want to uh, I want to encourage you uh, uh, right now. And, and release that thing in the spirit that you were believing for, uh, that the supernatural elevation of that would be completed in your life. That very thing that you were desiring to hear from him, um, that, that very thing, uh, that it be released in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I received that. Thank you. Amen. Expect it. Uh, it, it literally, expect it. Um, just, just, just come to expect it because it's been released in the spirit. It's been, it's been unlocked, and that's important. That is very, very important to the Lord. Very, very important. Which means you're also going to have another testimony. Now, <laughs> brother, yes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna prepare you for something because we all just agreed on something, and the Lord showed me it happened. Okay, so it's done. It's not like there's no plan B. It's done. All right. Mm-hmm. So. So now, so now, uh, brace yourself. Become expectant for the unexpected. Expect the unexpected. Expect it. Okay. Okay. Expect that um, that that as this word is being delivered to you today, and and as as even I correspond with you after this. Okay. Prepare mm-hmm. for prepare yourself for a storm. Okay, I'm going to tell mm-hmm. you this. This is prophetically it's really important. You remember this. I'm glad it's being recorded. Okay, prepare yourself for a storm. Prepare for something that's going to look like a hurricane coming to your life. It ain't going to make any sense. Don't be frightened. Don't be shocked and dismayed. Remember, our king told us this. Is reminding you of Luke chapter 8 in the parable of the four soils. Remember, what did he mm-hmm. say that happens every time that a seed is given? Every time a seed is planted, there's four things that happen. Not five, not six, not seven, not ten, four, right? The devil right. tries to take it from your heart. You go through the time of testing. We go through the uh, issues of life, and then we, we persevere, all right? We bind right now. We, I need, we come in together, Brandy, all of us, and everybody who's on this phone uh, that's listening in, and anybody who listens to this at a later time, uh, that, that we all come into agreement right now in Jesus' name. First off, we bind. Lord, send your warring angels and your spirit right now to bind yes. any assignment of the enemy that would come against Brother Brian and, and against uh, the assignment that is on his life. Lord, Father God, uh, uh, bind, bind any assignment. Bind any assignment because the word you are placing on him is critical and it's necessary in this time, yes. Father God. And it's full of compassion, and it's full of love, and most importantly, Lord, it's full of humility. So, Lord, I speak protection over that and, and bind any assignment. And, Lord, loose your warring angels to make a way for this brother. Encourage him with your ministering angels, Father God, that as he's walking along his path, and, Lord, you tell him to, to go to the right instead of going to the left, or to go to the left instead of going to the right at that exact moment when you tell him, what he needs to do and when he needs to do it, that, Lord, he will listen and not hesitate, even though that order from you will not make any sense whatsoever, and that he would stand his ground with the boldness, Father God, that you've given him, because when he hears it, he's going to hear the release of power when it's done, Father. And I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you will do this. I thank you, Lord, that you prepared and made that way and that you protected him and that you are granting him the desires of, uh, of his heart, Lord, and that you have heard his prayer, and Lord, all the desires of his heart that you, that you place inside of him, you are fulfilling and you are manifesting right now in his life, and he will know that peace, he will know that thing, and he will know in that moment, Lord, that you have heard him. Thank you, Father God. Praise you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. I felt led to speak that over you, brother. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Well, brother, if you got, if you have more testimony you want to share, I don't want to I don't want to take uh, any time away from you. So if you got more to share, uh, be my guest. Um, if 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 you do not and you don't feel led, then then we'll open it up. So I, I, you got oh, more feel testimony. Free. 
No, feel feel free to open it up. I feel a piece at what I shared, and so go ahead. Amen. Amen. Well, at this time, folks, uh, just like Sister Brandy uh, had mentioned before, uh, let's go ahead and if there is, folks, here, before we even open up the lines for testimony today, I'd like to I'd like to ask the body of Christ to agree with me for something. These testimonies are really, really important. These testimonies don't have any agenda that's attached to them. They're nothing but Holy Spirit giving a proper credit where credit is due. We are, we are recognizing the power of the Holy Spirit, we're recognizing that as mere mortal human men and women, we're, it's impossible for us to do anything. But we serve a God that can make the impossible possible in Jesus' name. We're declaring that together. But see, folks, we live in an age where church, it's, 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 we're, we're no longer living in the traditional church age. Okay, but, you know, you know, teenagers and folks that are out there that are riding the fence, they're not going to be going to 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 a church with with four walls and a steeple. But you know what they will do? They'll read Facebook today. You, you know what they'll do? They'll they'll go on to to YouTube. They'll watch you know crazy cat videos today, right? <laughs> so, so 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 we all know that we do this because we all do it ourselves. So 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 there's this testimony is going to be placed uh, at testimonytoday.org. It's on Facebook, all right? And, and what, I would, what I would ask is that you agree, and something that we've been praying for is more workers to help us with the harvest. And there is revival testimony inside of these testimonies that are being given, and lives are being changed, folks. And so it's important that we share these testimonies with others. So I'd like to ask you to take, like, literally one second, click the share button and share it with your friends, and tag your friends, you think that the Lord leads on your heart would be those that, 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 that the Lord leads that either need to hear this word or can help uh, take that word and elevate that into their friends and let that word, let that Holy Ghost testimony flood through the whole earth. And that's unconventional church, folks. That's, that's where people can listen to this brother talking about God leading them out, and, 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 and they, they'll, they'll immediately start recognizing the same thing and saying, you know, that speaks directly to my heart. And these are going to be people that this man will never see. He'll never talk to them. He'll never touch them, never smell them, never anything. Okay? There'll be people down in Mississippi, people down in Florida, people in New York. You'll never even know who these men and women are. And, and, and the word will still be working long after you're done thinking about it and you're thinking about something else. This word is still going to be working and still going to be effective. And I'm going to ask folks that they can share that word of testimony today and, and, and share it. Not, for, not to promote testimony today, but to promote the testimony that's on there. Okay, promote the testimonies that are given and, and elevate, elevate the testimony of your brothers and your sisters that take the courage to do that. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and I'll open it up. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll open it up. Hit the button star star. And unmute yourself uh, if you'd like to go ahead and give a testimony. Uh, go ahead and just say your first name, uh, where you're from, and give your testimony. We'll do, what we'll do is we'll go once, twice, and three times. If not, then we're all just going to pray and give a shout of glory to God, and, and we'll call a day and thank the Lord for, for this brother taking the time to, to, to speak. So, Lord, anybody that has a testimony, we're going to go ahead and go once. Go ahead and unmute your phone, hit star, star. God gives you a shout. You, you just you just gotta give the Lord some praise. Just put your star star button and use your phone. And start to We're gonna go once. We're gonna go twice. All right, folks. Then uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give the Lord a shout of glory. We're gonna give him a shout because we serve a God that can make the impossible possible. And if we don't serve a God that can make the impossible possible, then this is all completely and totally worthless. And somebody out there on this phone has got to say amen. So somebody say amen on this phone in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And you know something? I want to open it up. I, there's, something, there, there's something really important. There's something really important is, 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 does anybody, if they're on the phone before they leave, what measure of faith do you have to believe that God can do something for you today? Is there a need that you have, that you have faith for? I don't want to end this phone call 
without giving someone the opportunity that if they need something that is beyond their means, it is absolutely impossible in its nature. There's no way you're going to be able to overcome the limitation that you're, that you're, you're talking about by your own strength, your own, your own financial resources, your own intellect, okay? If there is something that's in your life okay, that you believe for and you're having faith for, and you want to say on this phone right now, I want, you to, I want you to be bold, and I want you to ask for that right now. And by the measure of your faith, it's going to be done for you on this phone call in Jesus' name. So I'm going to leave that open right now. If there's anybody who, who ha, who's, has faith in believing for something, we would like to agree with you right now and go ahead and open up that opportunity. You just say your name and, and, and praise the Lord and, and, and ask for what you have faith in. I'll go ahead and open it right now. Hallelujah. Right Hallelujah. Okay. My name is uh, Mark. Uh, can you hear me okay? I can hear you, Brother Mark. Okay. Well, I'm Brother Mark Garrett? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, I was going to write you a letter. Look at that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I am, listen, I am so grateful. I am so grateful for be in, being in the company of of, of, of you, you brothers who are on the path. I have been told a long time ago, it's prophesied even before I was a Christian, that I would be doing certain things, even before I knew the Lord. And, and I, it was a prophecy over me, and, and, and yet here I am. The very thing that I, was prophesied, prophesied back then is... It's it's coming to fruition. What Amen. I what I need of I'm, I'm I'm working with some extremely high in a high end situation. There's a change in the the global economy, the global government. What's happening? God is moving, and there's a, a shift that is not being announced anywhere. It's, you, you you won't see it on TV. You won't see it on the news. You won't see it anywhere. And even when it happens, you won't. You, you'll just you won't even know what's actually going on. Uh, there is a globalization of economy and and, and governments and so forth uh, that I'm sure we are all aware of. And, and again, an attack against the church. I've been called to to uh, do something about a year ago, almost to the, almost to the day that uh, is an industry that involves uh, historical bonds and boxes. I don't know if any of you heard of any of this, uh, but what it's getting you, ready. What would to... you what would you have, what would you believe for in faith? That's the most important what? thing. Okay. Yes. What I am am, am am trusting in the Lord for what He started, He will bring to completion. That this will come to fruition. There's a, a great struggle against what I'm doing. I know this. I was told this a long time ago. And so what I'm what I'm praying for is for this to come to fruition to the glory of God because what's what I'm called to do as as you as uh, uh, brother Joshua you saw in my my uh, my application there probably just a few minutes ago is I'm called to again uh, support ministries around the world I believe and I was told that I would do this not will try to do this that I would do this so I would like for everybody to stand in agreement for the work that I'm doing now in the successful completion of these uh, of this project with boxes and these historical boxes and bonds okay and this this I'm trusting the Lord again that this will come to to fruition very very soon and with that my ministry begins my true ministry which is again funding I'm an, I am an evangelist uh by calling uh and I'll, I'm also to assist in the funding of ministries worldwide uh, it sounds lofty, but um, there's a lot to this, which I won't go into. Um, and so I would like for everyone to stand in agreement with Thank me. You. Again, the devil's a liar. What God has said, his word goes forth, and shall not return to the void, but accomplish that which he pleases and prosper in the place where he sends it. And so I'm grateful, humbled by the fact that he's called me. And, again, for those who are on this call, if you would stand in agreement, I would be most appreciative. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Um, Amen. Brother, I'm going to, I'm going to mute your call there, Mark. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I feel led to pray about this and, and helping to lead this. Lord, Father God, we just lift up Brother Mark right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And the first thing that we're going to do, Father, that I feel led to is, Lord, we just, we just overcome and destroy every work of the enemy of fear and worry and lack in his life. Lord, Father God, we just overcome that, that spirit of worry that would come against them. I come against that, Father God. 
I rebuke any witchcraft spirit, any type of spirit of divination that would try to come to him, that would try to lie to him, that would try to rob him of his peace, that would, that would try to, 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 to be at a place where, 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 where it was making it very difficult and trying to put an unnecessary burden against him, Father God. Lord, I pray right now you would give this brother supernatural elevated wisdom, Father God, that, Lord, you would just release supernatural elevated wisdom to understand first the nature of things, Lord. You would just give him that. And then, Father God, you would begin releasing to him wise counsel. You would begin to surround him with men that are above reproach, Men, Father God, that honor and revere you. Men, Father God, that, 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 that look up to and meet the description of First Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. Okay, Father God, that you will surround him with those godly men. That, Lord, you will, you will give him that supernatural increase of favor and wisdom to carry out the favor for the body of Christ, Father God. And that everything be done, be done for the protection of of the saints, Father God. Let, 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 the, let the covetousness of money, let the covetousness of greed, let the covetousness of this world completely flee. And Lord, use uh, this man of God as an instrument, Lord Father God, as a mighty instrument in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 And, and, and Brother Mark will, will be speaking later because you had, uh, you, as, as the brother said, applied. And, uh, and, and I'll be talking with him later. Is there anybody else that has a measure of faith that they want to ask the Lord from? Yeah, I do. Amen. Who is this? This is Mark. <laughs> another, another Mark. Amen. Uh, I have been on a journey for the last 10 years that uh, um, I have asked, God to close the doors uh, three or four times and said, let me move on from it because it's, it's a, it's a battle. It's to help people. And uh, I'm, I'm just looking for uh, uh, just some prayer right now, just some encouragement because uh, we, I finally met up with some people that uh, are very knowledgeable, very, uh, very loving. And uh, I just want to be able to understand and grasp what they're, what, what I'm being taught right now. So, Mark, you're, are you it. married? Are you married, brother? I am. Okay. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, first off, first and foremost, Father God, we come right now in agreement as, as one body of believers right now. And, Father God, we're going to pray. Holy Ghost, I want to praise you. I want to thank you for this, brother Mark. I want to thank you, Lord, that we serve a God that can make the impossible possible. I want to thank you, Father God for bringing clarity to his situation. I want to thank you, Father God, that you remove all confusion from this brother, all confusion, all distraction from him in Jesus' name. Father God, I only pray that you will speak to him and lift him up. Father God, I'm praying for his wife. Lord, I pray right now that you elevate his wife. I pray that you will elevate her, Lord, and you will speak, continue to speak directly to her heart. And you will speak, Lord, and you will speak to her in such a way that, Lord, Father God, as you are speaking to her, that, Father God, you will begin to speak through her. I say, Father God, that, Lord, as you release the vision on this brother, that he will work with his wife. And that, Lord, you will release, you will release the blessing in his household. As both of them are completely in one accord in this vision that you've laid and that you're laying on this brother's heart, that, Father God, you increase his faith. And that, Lord, he will, he will lift up his wife in love, and that, Lord, they will, those two will work together in one accord. And, and, Lord, Father God, she would look up to him as, as the righteous Godhead of the house, the, the, the Lord, and, and, and the leader of the home. And that, Father God, that as you have placed the vision on this brother, which is directly tied to the spiritual gifts and talents that he's placed inside you. And, Father God's telling me that he made love your greatest gift. He showed me the Lord gave you discernment. He showed me that he gave it to you. He showed me the gifts that he gave you. And you know, you know what you feel from the Holy Ghost. You know what you feel from the Holy Ghost. You know when things are being released in power and authority compared to when people just sit and idly speak. All right? God's showing me, okay? And you've been steadfast. You've been steadfast, okay? And so you need to just 
release. Father God, release right now in his life. Release. Completely and totally change his life. Totally change his life. Completely release upon him, Father God. Release upon him in such a way, Father God, that doesn't even make any sense right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for protecting him. Thank you for setting him apart. Thank you, Lord, for granting him every single need, Lord, that he has during the season. Thank you, Father God, that you're going to surround him. And thank you, Lord, Father God, that you're going to use him. Father, thank you, Holy Ghost. You're going to use him to not only raise up leaders, but you're going to use him to help protect the saints. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Brother, God told me you're going to help raise up leaders and you're going to help protect the saints. So get ready. So, 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 Amen. so, so get ready. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. Get prepared, brother, because we're about to enter an unparalleled time in history. It's, it's not going to be like anything that has ever happened before. It's, it's not going to be like anything that's ever happened before, okay? It, it's, it's important that you're prepared because there's going to be division in this country soon. They say you've already begun to see it now. You know in your heart the wickedness that leadership is doing. You know how they lie. You know how they're cheating. You know how they murder. You know how they use God's name in an unholy way. You know how and you know the evil that you see in this age. This is a dark age. And it's about to split this thing right down the middle. And I'm telling you right now, brother, God's pouring out his spirit into those bodies that receive him. And I'm going to tell you, brother, that that revival spirit, it's not going to close down. You're going to have churches open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You're going to have so much healing inside of those churches, and you're going to have so much stuff that's going to be going on during that time. But, brother, it's going to be going on through total pandemonium. It's going to be going on. His, his spirit's going to be pouring out, and it's going to be literally war in the streets. But God's not, going to, God's not going to let you be harmed. Nope, he's not going to let the church, he's not going to let those faithful be harmed. There is a time and a season, and when that season comes, and when that time is released, he is using you. He is using you, and he's using your wife, and he has answered your prayer. And you need to know that he has answered your prayer in full measure today on this call. Be expectant for the release. Be expectant for the release. Be expectant that, that supernatural things are going to be happening in your life. Be expectant when you get off this phone call and you sit there and think about a day later, man, all this stuff starts happening. Okay, that's a spiritual attack that's against you. Stand on the foot of your boat right now, and when that attack comes against you, take authority. Stand on the authority of this word because nothing can overcome you until those things are fulfilled and they have not been fulfilled yet. Amen? Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Amen. Well, folks, be expectant. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Be expectant when you ask the Lord. He's able to give you everything. He's able to do all things. He's able to craft all things. Thank you, Lord. Sister Brandy, you want to close us out in prayer? Sure. Lord, thank you so much for the testimony that was shared here today, and, and I pray that um, that you will use this, um, what Brian shared today and, and Pastor Joshua, to uh, encourage the hearts of the people on this call and, and the people who listen to this uh, to the recording. And I just pray um, protection over everyone. I pray um, that their faith is increased and that they trust you at a whole new level um, because of testimony, because of the miracle signs, the wonders that you are, uh, that, that we're walking in. I just thank you that, that you just um, will, uh, will loose more miracle signs and wonders and, uh, in, in your church, Lord, in, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Brother Brian, it was an absolute honor, and this will not be the only time that we'll end up speaking, brother. There will be other times. Uh, Thank you so much for inviting me. I very much appreciate it. God bless you, brother. You're going to have a lot more to say. It's it's packed up inside you. It's just the timing. And so as the timing progresses, a a lot more and a lot more is going to end up being released because God's packed up a lot inside of you, and you are humble enough 
to uh, to receive it, and you're humble enough to digest it, and you're humble enough to deliver it. So thank the Lord. Praise Him. Amen. 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 God bless thank you guys. You. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Brandy. God bless you guys. Thank you. Amen. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.